Hello, Dr. Ronnie Lynn, and today's little lecture is all about hardening SQL Server. It's about security. And we'll talk a little bit uh, about what you can do to, once you've installed SQL Server, to make it a little bit harder for people to break into. So, what is hardening? Well, hardening is after you've installed a piece of software, you can then turn around and harden the software. What it is, it's the process of configuring, in this case, the database. You configure the options, accounts, settings, tools, all the things that go with that piece of software with the specific goal of increasing the security of the software. So even though we're going to talk about hardening SQL Server here, hardening actually can apply to all sorts of different types of software. So um, if you are an administrator of anything, you should be familiar with the process of the hardening that goes when you've done an installation. So let's go through some different things that you can do. Now, in hardening SQL Server, I kind of tend to follow a certain number of steps that actually work with the hardening. And some of these things are things that you really want to do. And some of these things are things that will be specific to a situation. So let's first look at what we call the SAE account with the super, the super administrator. This is basically a super user with, with uh, God privileges to the database. And when you install the database, you typically have an SA account. We're talking SQL Server here, but this doesn't just apply to SQL Server. In the case of SQL Server, it's got the sysadmin privileges, but it also has, it basically has access to everything. Now, because this account has a login name of SA, um, and it's always SA, it's a pretty common attack point for people to try to breach into the to the piece of software. Now oftentimes when you install a piece of software it has a default administrator account with a default password something like 1234 or 12 password and a lot of people won't cha even change that password making it very easy to break into that piece of software. So it's a common attack point. Now what are the things that you can do? Well you know you could just disable the SA um, account. It actually is a user account, but there's other things that you can do specifically to make it better. And you don't have to necessarily the, the, the get rid of the SA account, but it is easy to, to change it. So um, if you look at, if you now, one of the questions you're going to have is, well, do I have an SA account? Where is that SA account? Do, where is it installed? And actually, what users do I have? Well, if you look here, um, I'm looking at the database here. If I look at my master database and I look underneath security and I look underneath users, hey, there's my accounts. There they are. Um, I've got these specific accounts that are there and they're all going to have specific roles and privileges. I'm not actually getting into roles and um, users specifically in this lecture, but uh, I do want you to understand that specific users will have specific roles and some roles are definitely more dangerous than other roles. Um, but if you notice, in this case, no SA. Um, because I renamed it. Now, what if the, some, this, the, if you want to know the SQL commands to do this, they're relatively straightforward. Um, I'm not going to go every single SQL command that you do, but uh, let's suppose you did want to change that SA account there. Well, in this case, you'd use the master, um, which you should be familiar with, use master, and you can disable it, alter login SA disable. That's pretty simple. Or you can alter it by changing it to a new name, uh, which actually makes it less vulnerable because people that are trying to attack your server typically try to attack it with the name SA. Well, if the name is an SA, it's not going to work. That would be an ultra login and you're essentially changing the name there. So, uh, in this case, I am showing you pretty much everything you can do here. You can do with the tools or with SQL um, to, to make this the database hard. So, SA account, first step in hardening. So, <clears throat> you're going to have other accounts that are in the database and some of them are going to be vulnerable. Now, of course, the most vulnerable accounts you're going to have are ones with sysadmin role, specifically because they've got so much uh, capability of being able to do things on the, on the database. Now, when you're doing role management, role management should really be finding out exactly what a user that might be logging into your database needs to do and giving them those privileges that are specifically with that, and those privileges are roles. If they don't need high-level roles, don't give them high-level roles. But the ones that you're going to really look for are ones that have sysadmin and the other ones that have control server permissions. Uh, those can be extremely dangerous because you have the capability of doing a lot of things. Now, of course, sysadmin does actually have control server permissions. So control server is a permission. Sysadmin is a role. So, um, and you should be, at this point, at least some level of familiar familiarity with roles, permissions, and users. What about built-in administrators? Um, well, 
A built-in administrator, those are typically do actually have a high level of vulnerability also. And if you want to see those built-in administrators, you can use this simple script right here where you're actually coming uh, select star from sys um, server principles. Remember that you do have, now you have to be logged in with the ability to actually see sys.serverPrinciples uh, where the name is equal to, and then n actually just defines it as a standard character string built-in administrators. And that that will uh, look that will that will give you which ones are there. Now you may have a need for some built-in administrators, and in that case, you probably should not delete those. But in the case of of ones that are not necessary, these are a high point of um, vulnerability. And often each individual database may have built-in administrators, which each have role levels that may be higher than what they need to be. So that's one. That's looking at the users and specifically at that SA user, which is the highest level of vulnerability for most databases. But let's look at the next one here, stuff. You oftentimes, if you install a SQL Server, if you actually install most modern databases, you're going to have a lot of other things that get installed with it, like reporting services and integration services and analysis services and notification services. Any service that's running um, is basically another door to the house that can be broken into. If you get rid of those doors or disable those doors, you're going to make yourself more secure. So what's the easiest way to see what all those doors are on your computer? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. Just go to the Services Manager. The Services Manager does show you them. All the SQL Server um, roles are typical. I, I believe that every single one of them actually starts with SQL or SQL Server as the name of the service. So you can go and you can look specifically at, you know, here's these services. Okay, here's where they're running. Some do need to be running. Some don't need to be running. Okay, many of them are, are going to be by default set to automatic, which automatic typically means that guess what? It's going to be running automatically when you start up um, the server. I try to, I, I really do really recommend that for the ones that you know you're going to be running, like let's say uh, you're going to be using SQL Server a lot. When you start up the uh, server, you do want SQL Server to be running. Well, that's one that should be set to um, either automatic and, and you do start them. But these other server services, if you need them, go and start them manually. It's pretty straightforward. Now you're going to see in my case, I got most of these guys up and running and started. Well, why? Because I teach the stuff and I use them all the time for lectures and other things. I do think that it's probably I could probably go and shut them down afterwards. But uh, I'm also behind in a very very safe firewall, which also is another thing to look at is that if you're uh, behind a firewall, you do have at least one level of safety. People are typically not going to be sniffing each one of these individual ports that these things operate underneath so they can find a vulnerability. Authentication. Um, now, SQL authentication is that you can create users in SQL Server. They uh, have their own login. They have their own password. General rule. Um, if you can not have an extra login and password, don't. Okay, that's just a pretty good security rule. In SQL Server, it's relatively straightforward to use off Windows authentication. It's going to have its own security protocols. It's typically managed by the organization. Okay, that is a more secure way to get into the database that you want to get into. Um, in the case here, where we've actually got. Uh, specific login name requirements, specific login password requirements, specific login uh, password change requirements. That is managed by essentially the enterprise, the oper uh, the, or the people in the case where I work, the people who run IT. Whereas if I create an entirely new set of SQL authentications to get into a database, I've now got an entire new set of vulnerabilities. But bottom line is that Windows authentication is a more secure level of authentication than, than, tip, than SQL authentication. So it would be recommended to use Windows authentication for your database versus SQL authentication. Enable login logging. Okay. Well, people are going to be trying to get into your database if it is available out there and there's some reason to want to get into it. And you do want to know when people are trying to break in. So login, logging, which is part of the server properties. It's really straightforward. Right click on server, bring up properties, and get, a, get, get an idea of what these properties are. Uh, if you look at this, you've got this ability to specifically set up 
the ability to look at um, logins, none, failed, successful, or both. Pretty straightforward. Um, and it makes, makes life a little bit better for you in that you can actually look and see what's happening. Now, if you notice in this case, I'm actually running Windows in mixed mode, not just Windows authentication mode. Mixed mode basically means I'm running SQL Server and Windows authentication. Uh, again, because I have to be able to show how to do the different things. Normally, if I was running a database, I would typically try to keep it just in Windows authentication mode. So, another thing you can do, you can change the default ports for SQL Server. Uh, if you're somebody who is a hacker and you're actually an experienced type of hacker, you're going to know what the default ports are, so you're specifically going to sniff those ports and test for vulnerabilities on those ports. But you can change the port in SQL Server to be any open port, which just makes it that much more difficult to find the door. Another one is broadcasting. In SQL Server Configuration Manager, um, if I go into SQL Server and I want to see what all SQL Servers are available on my network, well, right now, anyone that's got broadcasting running, I am going to see it by default. Well, you don't have to announce your presence to the world there. You can turn that off. And again, that's turned off through the SQL Server Configuration Manager, which was, by the way, shown in the last slide. Some other things that you can do. Uh, one of the most obvious things that you can do is service packs. Keeping the service packs up to date, uh, both for the Windows version you have, Windows Server, or um, whether your desktop, and for SQL Server, they're typically going to have the latest security enhancements that go with that. The other thing is also that you have at least a decent software password policy. Uh, some passwords are relatively straightforward. And, you know, if you're, if you're just playing baby hacking and you go in, you might try passwords like 1234. That's a very common password that people use all the time. It's amazing how many times you can get into systems by simply doing that. That would not be considered a strong password. Strong passwords typically are, um, you know, greater than eight characters, contain at least one uppercase, have at least one character that is n not a, a numeric or a alpha character. So those types of password policies do help keep things more secure. At the same time, they can also be relatively a pain to deal with. But uh, you know, that's one of the things that users should be at least used to is coming up with passwords that they can both remember off the top of their head and are relatively strong. You can uh, disable the SQL Server browser services. That's uh, one of the services that actually is a very common point of attempt. If you really want to go into uh, high levels of security, well, SQL Server does offer uh, levels of encryption that you can do. You can encrypt at the cell level. Uh, you may say, you know what, I have this one cell or this one column in this database is extremely uh, important that nobody gets and hacks into. I can encrypt at that level which means that if somebody does break in, well, they're going to break in and get encrypted data, which means that unless you have the master key, it's going to be very difficult to find out what those values are. Uh, you can encrypt all the way up to the database or server level. That may be a little bit more than most people are going to want to do, simply because it is going to have to, it's going to have a toll on things like your performance, because when you encrypt something, you have to, to you know, be able to use it. You have to decrypt and encrypt. And, of course, you can use secure socket layer specifically to access that. There's instructions. I'm not going to give you instructions on how to do all these. Any of these instructions you can find through the MSDN uh, manuals, which give you how to do all of these things. So through these steps, you can, what we do, harden, the de harden your database. And is it a guarantee you're going to keep everybody out? Well, no. But is it going to be a much more safe and secure type of system that you have? Yes. And it is highly recommended that if you're dealing with any type of production database, you do need to have the, data, the database hardened to the correct extent. Thank you very much, and good programming.